Good evening and welcome to the APEC edition of the Professional VMware V Brown Bag Podcast. It's Alistair Cook here. It is uh, late December or mid December, and in New Zealand that means it's the beginning of summer. So it's been a lovely warm week here in in Auckland this week. Uh, I am all on my lonesome again. Uh, my good friend Andrea in Italy is uh, deeply involved in delivering a training course and so is unable to join us and uh, Grant seems to be very tied up in vCenter Automation Centre at the moment and uh, doesn't have a lot of uh, view to join us with so uh, it'll just be me talking tonight again as it was on the last episode. Uh, we are covering the VCAP DTA exam. Uh, the exam itself is still as yet unreleased. So we are still waiting for uh, the final release of the exam. Don't know when it will be released. The best thing I can tell you is that those of us who sat the beta got our results in the last two weeks. Uh, happily, I passed. Hooray. I don't have to sit the exam again, uh, along with a couple of my other uh, friends out there, including Andrea, who passed his as well. So uh, pretty happy the, uh, the, the exam is, is a, a good VCAP exam. and. Uh, yeah, you just got to be careful of your time, as you do with all of the, the VCAP exams. Uh, the blueprint will be released. There will be a public release of the final blueprint to come with the exam. And as always with the VCAP exams, uh, I print the blueprint and I mark off every section that I have completed. I don't book my exam until I'm pretty sure I'm going to have all of the pieces marked off before the exam date. But uh, as I was talking with, with one of my colleagues this week, you really do need to book the exam to give you some impetus to going and sitting it. Come to think of it, that was my 16-year-old daughter having to, to uh, book her driver's test. Uh, but the advice works equally well for, uh, for VMware exams. So uh, book it to give yourself a, an incentive to go out and do it. Study the blueprint, study the whole blueprint, make sure you're very comfortable with it. We've covered a few of these sessions. Uh, I'm going to cover the FNAP section today. It will be a fairly brief session today because I think the FNAP stuff I'll be able to run through fairly quickly. Uh, it's not expecting a huge amount of FNAP in the, the DTA exam and uh, so there's, there's not that much to cover in it. So let's head on to FNAP. Uh, what did I say I was going to cover in the slides? Slides say I'm going to cover FNAP. Uh, once again I was really well prepared and looked at my slides ahead. Uh, here we are back in the same auto lab that I used last last session. So I have a, uh, I guess I should refresh this page and it will prompt me for some more authentication. I have a, a view environment uh, built, uh, built in auto lab. So this is um, running view 5.2. Uh, this is the auto lab uh, 5.5 build more or less. Uh, I have a series of pools in here, and at the moment I have no FNAP configuration and no um, FNAP at all set up in here. I have taken the liberty of creating a FNAP package, and I've chosen to create a FNAP package for paint.net, which is one of the classic things that we use for doing uh, FNAP work in the, uh, in the VMware courses. I actually spent today teaching the VMware uh, One Day FNAP course. To do FNAP integration with Vue, we have to have a file share to place our uh, FNAP packages on. Uh, so I'm going to put the file share on the domain controller virtual machine. Uh, nice, easy to access uh, machine in the environment. Uh, what did I do? I did already create, I think, a FNAP share on here. There we go, there's a FNAP share. Uh, in fact, it's just a folder at this stage, so I don't even bother to share it. Uh, let's just go through it this way. All right, so I have got a share as ThinApp. Um, now, one of the peculiarities where you're doing the integration with a view in ThinApp is this share needs to have uh, permissions not just for users, but also for domain computers. This is because when we integrate ThinApp with view, the computer account that we're publishing the, the FNAP package, so it's the computer account that's used to do the actual registration of the FNAP package. That doesn't mean that we can take away the uh, user, so the domain user's account also needs rights in here to read the, the share. Uh, domain users and domain computers both need access to read in here because the actual execution of the FNAP package happens as the user, whereas the registration of the FNAP package inside the, the VDI desktop happens with the computer account. 
Okay, so we've got that one. Uh, we've got the share set up correctly. Well, let's just make sure that the file system permissions. Uh, I'm going to explicitly set file system permissions for uh, domain users. Uh, and again, it only needs to be read. It doesn't actually need to be uh, to be modified because, of course, the thin app package uh, is um, is opened only for reads. It's never written to by the the user of the thin app package. And that looks like I made a typo in the. Oh no, it did. We're good. Okay, so the file share is now available. Logged in as as myself as the administrator. Um, I have extensive rights to it, but generally people have read only rights to it. Minimize out my RDP session to the domain controller, and then I'll come back into the file share where I've got FinApp installed. So FinApp is installed, and in my case, I placed it on the uh, NAS box on the build share because that's universally accessible within the lab. I have taken the liberty of capturing uh, paint.net, and so I have in here a FinApp package. Uh, I have a standard MSI package, and I have paint.net thin app package here as well so that that launches successfully as you can see it's a, a thin app package. Um, wait for that to load and then I'll close it again because I'm going to need to rebuild the package. There we have it. Uh, the default MSI that's generated is a full install MSI so if I double click that it copies the thin app package down onto our C program files on my PC. That's not what we want. We want a streaming MSI package. To turn this default MSI into a streaming MSI we come in here and we edit up our package any file and it's just one line, it's this MSI streaming line down here uh, we just set that to true. I would like you to uh, make an MS streaming MSI package. Nothing else needs to be changed in here uh, potentially you could be asked to do something like changing the uh, sandbox path uh, and that would require an additional line in here because we don't have by default a uh, a directive for sandbox path. Uh, so the sandbox path directive would need to be added if you were told to put the uh, sandbox on a particular file sheet, which would be a fairly common thing to do in a real world view build, is to not have the thin app sandbox as part of the roaming profile because that will compromise your log on log off times. Even if you're using uh, profile um, persona management, uh, the log on log off time can be problematic, or at least not the log on log off time, but if the sandbox is being managed with persona management, if you've got a large sandbox it can make the thin app package very slow to load because the sandbox has to be pulled down as you start the thin app package rather than being done at login. So I, for uh, production use I definitely like putting my sandbox on a file share. Right, so we save that out. Now I've changed the package any file, I have to rerun the build script in order to have those changes applied to my ThinApp package. Happily paint.net is not very large and so it doesn't take a huge amount of time to rebuild. Particularly on my now much more powerful lab. This um, lab is sitting on top of a uh, Nutanix node and so I've got lots of storage performance and lots of memory and lots of CPU compared to my old lab. There we go. Because we're still testing, I haven't made this a, um, I haven't done compression on here, so it's relatively fast to build. There it is. So now in the bin, we have a much smaller MSI file. You see that it's, it's under two two megabytes, where it was it was about 34 megabytes previously. Uh, that's because it no longer contains the actual ThinApp package itself. The net package will just point back to the one on the share. So if we take those, we connect to our share, and let's create a folder in here for paint.net, and we'll dump our newly configured package in here. Cool. So now we've got the combination of an MSI package and a ThinApp package, the MSI being configured for streaming install. So we've now got the infrastructure set up at that layer. We need to come back into the View Admin Portal, and we need to add that ThinApp repository. So we're going to have DC 
DC repository and it sits on DC just watching for typos because with the world watching you always make typos. Okay, so now I've got a repository. Uh, at that point I can then come in here into the Thinaps section and I can scan for new Thinaps. Very annoyingly you have to select the repository and then you have to explicitly actually select the folder in here. I think that's still true that you, you must explicitly select the, the share inside the uh, Thinaps repository. Uh, it goes out, says yes, I've found an MSI package on here. It is a Thinaps MSI package, it's a streaming one and away we go. Good, we have paint.net that's been added. So we now have paint.net available to us to assign to a desktop. My plan is to take the Windows uh, 7 pool, so this pool here, and assign. Uh, I haven't got the view client installed in here. I realized I couldn't actually get it in here very quickly. So I'm going to use, uh, just use the console of the virtual machine. So I'll just open console on this Windows 7 virtual machine. Uh, I'll log on to it as administrator. I'm already logged on as administrator. Why have I got a paint.net icon? Let's not use that one then because it already appears to have paint.net on it. Let's use this VM instead. In the best vbrown bag. Uh, traditions will find a fault along the way and we will then work around it. So let's log on to here. So this machine we should see does not have um, paint.net installed when we eventually get logged on. Right. Cool, wonderful. In fact, you know what I should do actually, I think I know why that other VM has paint.net installed on it. Uh, the desktop called 701. This is the one that I logged on to previously that has paint.net installed. I am simply going to refresh this desktop. Oh, yeah. Where's my... Oh, yeah. Uh, view Composer, I'm going to refresh that machine. That will throw away, uh, I'm fairly sure that um, Windows 7 001 machine I'd forgotten to uh, to refresh. Um, here we go. Yeah, I've done the capture inside that Windows 7 machine. So, uh, here I've got the 02 machine. It definitely doesn't have paint.net installed. Let me change the screen resolution down to uh, excruciatingly small uh, so that we can actually, oh yeah, here we go. 800 by 600, that actually should then get the whole desktop on screen. Yes, we'll keep those changes. So definitely no signs of paint.net anywhere in the start menu or anything in here. So we can safely assign now back in the view portal. Uh, view administrator, we can go into our thin apps, we can take our paint.net thin app, and we can add an assignment to a pool. And I'm going to assign this to the view composer pool that we just saw. It's going to continue to be a streaming install. That means that the MSI package remains on the share, it doesn't get copied down inside the, uh, the desktop itself. I've done the assignment. They've actually watched, whoops, that was, was that the wrong place? Oh, I'm back on DC, that's not where I wanted to be. I've actually watched inside a virtual machine when that assignment is done. And so we can see at this point that the uh, Thinap package has not yet been assigned to it. I'm going to reboot this machine. And that will force the view agent to reinitialize. Now normally you wouldn't need to do this, normally you'd, uh, the, the next time the user logged on the Thinap package would already be there on their desktop, but because I'm not logged in through the view client and because uh, the administrator account is not actually authorized for this pool, I'm showing up in the view as an unassigned user and the, the view agent's going to be a little unhappy about it. So uh, this, this restart is really just to trigger a restart of the view agent and make sure it then reads back from the connection server the, the correct configuration and deploys out that for that package.
It's one of the nice things about having a uh, fairly powerful lab host is that I've been able to up-spec the RAM in my Autolab nested ESX service and can then run these nested virtual machines with a reasonable amount of RAM and get some decent performance in them. Uh, that's the Autolab default password. And now I hold my breath hoping that the demo is working correctly. Only so far it's not up. I do wonder whether the view agent has finished loading and that maybe the reason I'm not seeing my desktop is that the agent's not yet there. So I should be on C02. The agent's still in its startup phase. And there we go, agent's now available. Do we now have paint.net anywhere? Please have paint.net, play nicely. Huh. You know what, I should have practiced this. But I guess in the exam you don't get to practice things, you have to actually deliver them straight out. So if we look at this desktop here, it's our source and ask ourselves why we don't have any ThinApp packages in here check for the assignments that are going to show up. The assignment is not showing on this desktop. Interesting. We're on the pool Composer Win 7. In Thin Apps I have my Thin App package. I've got an assignment in here. Definitely set that assignment to the pool, so I'll come in and have a look at that pool. Come on, play nicely, show me the pool. Edit dialog is probably not going to show me the assignments I'm trying to remember. Um, it's kind of show me, tell me where things are in the GUI is what was in the VCA exam. You've got to love it when the UI doesn't do what it normally does for you. The UI at that point should have allowed me to double click on the pool and see all of the VMs in the pool. Go down to the website, reload it. There we go, this time it plays nicer. Hmm, I wonder if I need to set an entitlement before we will actually see that FinApp package assigned. Let me do that now. So the entitlement is now present. Uh, Pool should be provision. It's enabled, so we're good at that layer. If we go into the desktops again, we have a look at our Windows 7.2. Interesting that we're seeing maintenance mode. That should be the refresh occurring. Has our thin app assignment to the pool turned up yet? Certainly not showing the pool assignment in here. Let's explicitly add an assignment then. Let's just add paint.net to this one desktop and see if that makes a difference to our desktop. Still no change. Uh, let's make sure that from here that I can read the share. Come yeah, on. Do 
you know, I said my lab was nice, nicely performing. It's uh, not looking quite so nicely performing just right now, is it? Uh, in the DC, DTA exam, like all of the live online exams, you will have some challenges with the user interface being unresponsive, with things being slow to paint. Hopefully the fault with the, um, with the RDP sessions inside RDP sessions will be cleared before you go and sit the exam. Uh, when I sat the uh, beta exam, the... Um, there was one of the RDP sessions, so you need to understand that there are three RDP sessions. From the Pearson Testing Centre where you sit your exam, there is an RDP session up to Pearson's uh, headquarters in the US. Uh, from Pearson's headquarters, there's a second RDP connection into VMware's jump host in Washington State, and then there's a third RDP, and these are all nested one inside the other. Um, these RDP sessions happen one inside the other to get you to the lab. So you are three layers deep in RDP before you even hit the lab. And this causes a lot of the, the issues that we see with, uh, with the UI being slow and sometimes the screen paints being difficult. Uh, hopefully that middle RDP session, I think the, the one that was problematic was the one from Pearson to VMware and that was giving us 8-bit colour. And so we've got all sorts of problems in between. Uh, definitely not seeing... <laughs> Adrian says yes, he had a very poor experience um, in his exam. I'm going to restart this machine a second time to see if the assignment turns up after that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is have a look at the, see if the assignment shows. So the assignment, well that's probably a, an artifact there when it shows back. So the assignment for that thin app package is definitely not showing against the uh, the desktops. Um, so it's definitely showing up as two assignments here for paint.net, but what we're not seeing is the thin app assignment on either of the desktops showing up correctly. Interesting, I haven't seen that fail previously. Fail to show. So it's definitely showing ThinApp is being installed, uh, the paint.net ThinApp package is being installed on C002, which is the one that I just restarted. Let's see if it actually shows up this time when we log in. And there it is, finally our assignment on the desktop. Uh, I have suspicions that there's issues around uh, the way I'm accessing this that it's causing our, our problem. Uh, when the ThinApp package is assigned through that streaming uh, streaming assignment, we find that the, the shortcut in here points back to the actual XE that's alongside the MSI package on that share. Uh, and that's a critical part because if I want to do an upgrade to the, the ThinApp package, then uh, it, I have to place the upgrade alongside on the same share and we use that integer updating. So paint.net should now load happily. And this is running off the, the streamed location. Vroom, chuck, chuck, chuck. All right, so there's paint.net running as my ThinApp package, looking like a normal locally installed copy of paint.net. So let's see if the uh, if the assignment now shows up correctly for the other desktop. So that was on uh, C002. That's the one where I have manually set the assignment directly on this VM. Um, I'd set the assignment at the VM level when it was also set at the pool level. 
So I'm actually going to remove the assignment here from this virtual machine at the VM level. Done. I should have stayed log logged on so we could see that disappear. And then I've got the assignment here. Um, this assignment's done at the pool level for it. No, I don't want to remove it. I wonder if we've got any events around that for that packet. Oh, I haven't turned on event DB when I rebuilt. I should have turned the event DB back on. So let's see now if the C001 machine has the Thinet package assigned. Nope, it doesn't think it has. No assignment showing up there. Come back into the desktops list. See C001 is now available, so I will close out C002, open up C001 and we'll open a console on that and see if the Thinet package has turned up as it should have. Uh, we do this in the uh, the uh, view install configure manage course. The uh, Thinet package shows up very nicely exactly as it should. Um, makes for a fairly boring story if things work correctly. Much more interesting when we have problems like this. Yeah, so the package still hasn't shown up in here. Maybe we should uh, get rid of that assignment here. We'll take that. We will Okay, so it's showing no assignment. Uh, hang on, that was desktops. So I want to do add assignment. Select the pool. Add assignment to pools. We should see the pool actually list. Okay, it's not even going to show us that it's it's assigned. Now I can't remember where the pool should show me. There should be somewhere in here where it shows me the uh, assignment of the Thinet package, but I just ain't seeing it today. There we go, inventory Thinaps. So paint.net is definitely showing as being assigned. I'm going to remove the assignment from the pool. Make sure everything shows as not being assigned, and then I'll add back the assignment to paint.net streaming. All right, let's see then if that makes any difference anywhere. Okay, so we still don't show it, see it showed, showing up as assigned against the desktop, so it's entirely possible that it doesn't show up assigned to the desktop. But we still haven't seen the, um, the application delivered into the desktop either, which is a worry. Yeah, definitely not the behaviour that I get when I teach the uh, the course on this. Generally, as soon as you assign the Thinat package to the pool, uh, the shortcuts appear uh, almost immediately inside the desktop. They uh, they don't take a long time to turn up. Other tricks and traps. Um, Biggest one is generating the MSI file and making sure you set it to streaming. Uh, the next one is making sure that the domain computer's account has access to the share where you place your Thinet packages. Uh, those are pretty much the, the gotchas on, on building Thinet packages and integrating them with Vue. Uh, everything else tends to be uh, much less of an issue. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to wait until the agent in the desktop actually shows up as available. So it should be showing as agent unreachable. Uh, then we should go through the startup process of the agent. Okay, we're now showing available, but we haven't yet got the agent version. I'm always a bit concerned when the agent version's not being reported. It should all be 5.2. There we go. Now it's showing startup for the agent, which is interesting. Uh, when it showed the available status earlier on. 
suggesting that the agent's doing something and I'm hoping it's deploying a Thunap package. Uh, in the exam, if you do find yourself at any of the, um, if you do find yourself at any of these kind of leftover states waiting for things in the exam, don't just sit idly waiting for them. Uh, that time is precious. I always make a note on the, the whiteboard that you're given of uh, what question number it is that I haven't completed and what activity in there that I need to, to validate completes. If you run short of time, and you usually do, then it's good to, to be able to just look at the list of things that are incomplete and, and go and check that they have completed correctly. Uh, if you have to go back through all of the questions in the exam, the UI is slow. It will take you forever to run from one end of the questions to the other. So it is important that as you go through and you, you leave an element behind, um, that, that you actually check that uh, you, you make a note of what you need to do to prove that that element is complete. Oh, that is disappointing. We still don't have the uh, pool assigned, uh, the pool assigned desktop uh, for that package still hasn't shown up. So I'm definitely on, yeah, I'm on 01. I am, for the hell of it, I'm going to do an explicit assignment on this VM. So I'm just going to explicitly add paint.net because this eventually showed up for us uh, on on the other uh, VM. Uh, let's just see that status should change from assigned to installed at some point. Hopefully I don't have to do anything too, too nasty to get it to turn up as installed. While we wait, we'll just check back and see if it's turned up inside the desktop and it hasn't. I don't recollect needing to reboot the virtual machine for these thin app packages to be installed. So Adrian's commenting that he's seen that the uh, using the view client um, that the the package turns up rapidly, and that's outside of uh, this afternoon or this evening. Uh, that's been my experience: is that the uh, the package uh, turns up very much seconds after you uh, set the configuration and view. So I think there's something a little odd going on in my environment, primarily I think because I'm not logging on through view and I'm not logging on with the assigned user because uh, this desktop doesn't actually belong to uh, administrator that I'm logging, with, logging on with. Uh, maybe we should actually do the assignment then because I'm about out of things that I was planning to cover, but I'll uh, make a segue into using the, uh, well, it's not an x86, is it? It's a 64-bit application now. Um, oh, I'm not on the connection server. Uh, I was going to do a manual assignment, so uh, in this, this particular pool that I'm working with is configured as dedicated assignment. Uh, and it's it's dedicated with uh, automated assignment. So the, the first user to log on through view is assigned the desktop. So what I planned to do was to assign this C01 desktop uh, to a user. This is a, the manual assignment of a desktop to a user is done on one of the connection servers and it's done using the VDM admin tool. Okay, so this is another of the essential skills for uh, VCAP level knowledge of view. You need to be able to uh, open up a command prompt and find in uh, the uh, VMware view, uh, I can never remember the full path. Uh, bin, there we go. VDM admin. So I want to use VDM admin to do an assignment. So I'm going to use the there we are, minus capital L VDM admin minus L slash question mark. That should that doesn't give me explicit. Uh, ha. Huh. Okay. 
uh, Dredge's brain for the actual syntax for this. So we need, in the exam you won't have Google accessible to you, so let's see if we can do this without Google. We need to specify a pool, so the pool ID is composer-win7. Uh, uh, now is that, uh, let's actually look, let's see if I can get some proper help out of that. So Adrian's comment is, um, is there, or that, that he hasn't noticed the ability to use the manuals during the exam. I also didn't, uh, I didn't uh, think that the, the manuals were there in the exam, they absolutely are. On the first desktop you hit, there is a folder on the desktop called documentation, in that are the PDF documents. But as Adrian says, you shouldn't expect to be able to um, you shouldn't expect to be able to view these easily. To go in with there with the understanding that you can, if you must, uh, read the documentation, but that it will chew through a huge amount of time. So you should be able to find the answers to your questions yourself. So minus L took out minus D for the desktop name. I guess since the virtual machine name has to be unique in here, that makes sense. So I wanted to assign the desktop called Win7-C-001. Uh, win7 dash, and I would have put a capital W on the win being me, uh, dash 001, and then it's going to be a minus u uh, lab slash vi dash admin. And it says you've got that wrong. So the help text that I got said the minus L switch takes a minus desktop name, minus machine, so that suggests the minus desktop is actually the pool name, uh, which was win7-composer, and then minus D for, uh, minus M for the machine. Could not locate pool information. What have I miswritten for the pool ID? Uh, composer-17, I've got the name order the wrong way around. Uh, strongly suggest that you use cut and paste wherever possible to do this. There we go, now the assignment is done. And so we should see in the desktop list, uh, 17C01 is now assigned to a user. Lots of fun because the uh, SID, there we go, SID's now been, been assigned back. So now if I log into this one seven double oh one machine as VI admin rather than administrator. So this time I'm logging on with the assigned user, but I am still logging on through the console rather than through the view client, and that may be an element of what's going on here. I didn't believe it was. I thought there's the actual thin app install was done by the view agent rather than uh, having anything to do with the view client being connected. Um, and that's why you can only assign to a desktop or to a pool. You can't assign a thin app package to a user. Um, that's kind of one of the restrictions on the thin app assignment. Of course, since I've never logged on to this desktop as VI admin before, uh, first creation of, of the profiles can be slow. While we wait, we'll have a quick look back at the. Uh, come on, release my cursor. Uh, quick look back at the desktop list. If we refresh that, we should see a status in here that VI admin is logging on. Uh, we haven't yet seen the status update. Still logging on. In the exam, uh, you will get the real view client to play with if you need it. 
and uh, that will be, there we go, now I've logged on as the right user, I got the right uh, Fnat package installed, uh, made available inside my desktop. What I might try now, uh, because this this desktop I explicitly set that uh, the assignment on, uh, I had manually assigned in here, and that's now showing installed. If I go back to the desktops list C02, I haven't explicitly assigned to C02, so I'm just going to go and uh, come back in here. I am going to take the C02 machine and assign it to administrator and see if that makes a difference to the Thinat package turning up, whether it is actually that the desktop is assigned to the user that's logging in that's making the difference here. Don't need the C01 machine anymore. Come in and grab ourselves a C02 console. This time when I log in as administrator it will be the authorised user, so view should be happy. No paint.net. Very disappointed. All right. Well, on that um, slightly off-color note, I think I'm going to close this, close off this session. Uh, as I said at the beginning, a fairly short session. The view integration into uh, the thin app integration into view is uh, is not terribly deep. It's certainly thin app itself goes a lot deeper than uh, than the integration into view. But uh, that fundamentally. The use of, of ThinApp is really not the desktop administrator or the, the view administrator's area. Uh, we as the, the DTA kind of people are about supporting the desktop rather than the applications. Uh, as I usually say in the, the ThinApp courses that uh, application packaging is a skill set of its own that requires a specialist set of knowledge that uh, isn't in the, the server virtualization team and, and this is I think why we don't actually have, I don't recall there being a huge amount of thin app in the, the DTA exam blueprint, I don't have mine to hand but um, my expectation is that the assignment of the package and, and possibly the, the rebuilding of a passive package with the streaming MSI option other things that are going to be important, the ability to set up the infrastructure to deliver these thinnet packages. All right, well, this has been the Professional VMware V Brown Bag uh, APAC edition, and this is, I think, it was our fourth edition, looking at the VCAP DTA Desktop Administrator Certification. I'm taking a break over Christmas, taking a couple of weeks off, not even doing any real work. Um, Hopefully that means I'll get some auto lab time, don't tell my wife. Uh, and I will talk to you all uh, again on the 16th of January is the date that I think I'm going to be uh, restarting. That's certainly when I've scheduled for. So everybody have a great Christmas, New Year break. For those of you in the US, you've been on the holidays for a long time. For those of us here in the ANZ region, it's just the beginnings of the holidays. Enjoy your holidays, everybody. <laughs>